Hello and welcome. From the beginning of next month, businesses and individuals should be able to pay for their taxes from homes and offices. It followed the decision by the Ghana Revenue Authority to fully automate all its platforms for revenue collections. The authority believes that this should also help improve tax compliance among businesses in the country. Reverend Amisha Dawusu Amwa is the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority and has been speaking on PM Express Business Edition. We are also going to put in um, a lot of measures towards um, compliance. Mm. Um, just like I told you about the goal where we have to be innovative to be able to get compliance. Mm. The same way, one of the things that we are going to do, and again, you know, we are not only talking about the, uh, the expansion, but also the, uh, the death mm. or the penetration or to the extent to which people, because some pay, but maybe they pay um, only a quarter or a tenth of what they are or supposed to pay. Or it goes to, to George's pocket, maybe. Uh, that's also there. <laughs> and then sometimes, it's like the way the people say they pay tight, but they find out that maybe they are only paying uh, 2%, not 10%. Yeah. And we will find the same thing in the uh, taxation. Mm. That um, there are a lot of the, so some of the initiatives I can quickly go around through for you is mm. that we have set up a completely new department called the High Net Worth Individuals Department. Mm -hmm. Previously, High Net Worth was only a part of one another unit. It was not a focus attention. And then based upon this data, as well as data that we are picking from the professional association, so we are also doing that data matching. So we are getting the list of all the possible High Net Worth um, individuals. It cuts across everything. In fact, um, I remember recently we had to call one pastor and say, oh, why are you calling me to be a high net worth? And so we have done your, your analysis. And then when we were chatting with the pastor, actually he came to my office and we were chatting. And then we, he said, I only sit on two boards. And I said, oh no, you sit on five boards. And he said, how do you know? I said, you sit on this board, you sit on this board. And then he said, oh, those are that one, I don't get anything. This one, I don't get anything. So eventually he admitted that he sits on five boards and not two boards. Okay. Do you understand me? So it's because of the analysis that we have. So done. more data analytics that you're doing uh, internally as well. Exactly. So once you do that, then the compliance comes in. Uh, so through that, uh, last year, for example, we almost doubled the revenues from the high net worth um, individuals. And therefore, we are expecting that this year, and there's a complete unit that has said that this year will be actually um, go three times mm -hmm. what we did on the high net worth. William Owusu Dementia is a tax consultant and lecturer at the University of Ghana School of Law. He joins us via Zoom for a conversation on taxation. William, I'm so grateful that you joined us. First of all, what's your take on GRA's digitization move to improve revenue collection? Thank you very much for the opportunity. One of the canons of a good tax system is convenience when it comes to taxes. Now, how do you make taxes or payment of taxes convenient? It is by making sure that people do not have to wake up, get away from their homes, stay in traffic, walk up to a tax office, and fulfill their tax obligation. So any move that gets us to be able to get people to comply with their tax obligations from the comfort of their homes, and if it's a market woman, if the person is sitting in the market, I, I can use Momo or any other platform to be able to pay my taxes. Or if I'm working in an office, I can use my Visa card, anything linked to my bank account to pay. It's a laudable idea. It makes it very convenient for people to be able to fulfill their tax obligations without going through the hassle and bustle of getting to a tax office and queuing. And so I think it's laudable. It's overdue. But we thank God that today we are seeing it come to light. And I think that would enhance this whole process of generating enough revenue to be able to finance our expenditure uh, items on the budget. Of course, speaking of the budgets, we do know that one of the main concerns that cropped up uh, in the span of uh, a couple of weeks ago was the matter of taxing of online transactions. You have been heavy on this particular research field. What do you think the GRE you know, uh, finds of a deficiency when it comes to taxation of online transactions, which is key to revenue mobilization? Well, the, the difficulty is because online transactions occur in different places. So let me give you a particular example. If today, William, I decide I want to buy something from Amazon, mm. I go online, I click Amazon.com, I click the item. Let's say it's a digital item, like an audiobook or an ebook. 
I click on it and I get it downloaded onto my system. I use my Visa card to pay for it. And the system takes the money and my account in Ghana is debited. The critical question is, how do you determine who, where the income was earned? Did Amazon end the income in Ghana? Mm. Am I, as a person, required to withhold tax on the payment and take it to GRE? Does Amazon have to come and file a return in Ghana? The service could be somewhere. Uh, is it the place where the server is located that has the taxing rights? You see, traditionally, when the taxes were designed, it was designed for brick and mortar economies where an item was produced in one country and had to be physically transported to another country. When we have online and electronic goods and services, it defeats that brick and mortar system of international taxation. Mm. And therefore, we'll have to have some consensus as to how some of these things will be taxed. I know that GRE has put in place a tax force to design a policy for the taxation of uh, online transactions or electronic commerce transactions. They are pure play transactions which occur purely online, like the digital item buying on Amazon. The item that I buy that will physically be brought to me in Ghana, there's also another way to be able to track that and tax that. There are several components of it. So I think that when the policy guidelines come out, we'll be able to make the necessary contributions to ensure that we are attuned with the global system because it's not only Ghana. The EU has its own rules. The US and other places are developing their own rules for tradition of electronic commerce transactions. The OECD is very particular about that. So within the Committee of International Tax Rules, we'll be able to generate the needed rules to be able to get our fair share of revenue when it comes to taxation of electronic commerce transactions. William, thank you very much for joining us. He's a tax consultant uh, speaking to us on matters regarding tax mobilization in the country. Well, it appears a mixed reaction for mobile money users.